Hey guys, my name is Tito. I make videos on personal finance on my other channel. On this channel, I talk about other things like today when I'll be reviewing the new Nollywood film, Vanity. Vanity is a drama about Kobe and Ify, newlyweds who start fighting a lot because Kobe feels that his new wife should get a job to help pay the bills in their home instead of being a liability to him. You know, I don't understand why you prefer to just spend your entire time eating and watching people fulfill their purpose and impact their world. However, things get even more tense when Ify gets pregnant. Vanity is loosely based on real-life events and is directed by Chukwu Emeka Nwambunze. Now, I first heard about this movie sometime last year when Jemima Osunde posted on her Insta stories a video clip of herself and Uzo Arukwe in a car while they were filming this movie. I only heard about it again after that just two weeks ago when Jemima posted on her Insta stories yet again that she has this film Vanity coming out and she'd like all of us, her followers, to go and watch it. Now, was this film worth my time and my money? Let's find out first by looking about at the performances in the movie. <laughs> Jemima Osunde. Jemima is like 60 to 70 percent the reason why I went to see this film and even why I know about the film in the first place. I don't think aside from the posters I saw at the cinema that I, I would have heard about this film otherwise. She plays Ify, a newlywed who was based in Port Harcourt but she moves to Lagos to be with her husband, you know, once they get married. Now her husband Kobe, played by Uzo Arukwe, he's, um, he's an ass basically. So he doesn't see any reason why his wife should be at home just doing just being idle he believes in like a joint income household and he wanted his wife to get back in the labor market to earn good money from her chemical engineering degree so that she could contribute to their household right but fortunately or unfortunately as we say here in nigeria she gets pregnant and that keeps her at, ho at home even longer to the frustration of her husband kobe now he's emotionally abusive because of all this and as you'd imagine if he goes through all sorts of emotions like frustration, anger, resentment, confusion because she doesn't know who this person that she's married to is with the way he's talking to her and treating her just because she's at home pregnant and whatnot. And I think um, Jemima did a very good job communicating all those emotions with her character Ify. It was refreshing to see Jemima on screen. Like I said, I don't get to see her that often. I don't, I can't even remember right now the last movie I saw Jemima in. I remember the last series I saw her in, rumor has it on Indani TV, but um, it's not that often that we get to see Jemima in a big screen production. Now Uzo Arukwe plays the husband Kobe and they go to great lengths to make Uzo's character look like a scumbag in this film. I mean, you really resent the guy as you're watching the movie because he has this philosophy of, you know, a wife should be working, she shouldn't be idle, she should contribute her quota and all that. There's nothing fundamentally wrong with those ideals, but it's just the way he communicated it. It almost felt like he wanted the wife to be a slave and to, you know, sus help sustain his lifestyle. And the funny thing was that he wasn't suffering, he was doing well for himself, but I guess he just didn't want his, his wife to be sitting on her laurels and be expecting him to take care of everything. But it's just the way he goes about the whole thing just makes you really not like the character. You just, he's such an a-hole. And um, he did a good job, you know, if, if that was his objective, to make us hate the character. But I also liked the fact that, you know, he spoke Igbo. If you remember from my Glamour Girls review, I said that I enjoy it when, you know, Uzo speaks Igbo in, these, in the films that he's in, and he speaks a lot of Igbo in this movie as the character Kobe. So Uzo actually did a good job in this film. Now, Chinyere Wilfred is also in the film as the husband's mother or the mother-in-law, and she did a really good job for a mother-in-law type of character or role she had quite a number of scenes and lines more than i expected anyway and she's a different type of mother-in-law she isn't the kind of mother-in-law you'd expect in this film she's a bridge between the husband and the wife and once again she her performance was good i enjoyed the character in the first half of the movie in the second half of the movie mm, not so much but she did a good job and there's a lot of um Christian faith and scripture in this film. In fact, at a point you'll be wondering if this is a Christian movie, but a lot of that is largely from the mother-in-law played by uh, Chinyere Wilfred 
in this film. Now, other actors that you may know that were in the film were Belinda Yanga Ageda. You may remember her from Juju Stories back in January. So she played a friend of the couple and Belinda always brings her A game whenever she's in a, in a movie. She did, she did okay. Kachi Noshi was also in the film as another friend of the couple. He had like one or two scenes, but nothing too groundbreaking if you ask me. And then Patrick Diabua plays like a preacher or a father or like a church figure essentially who is trying to guide the couple, you know, spiritually. What I liked, I liked seeing Jemima in this film. Like I said earlier, we don't get to see Jemima in a lot of movies that make it to the cinemas. And I think she's a really good actress. I, I enjoy her acting. I just wish I, we could see her in more diverse and more different kind of roles. But she did a good job in this film. I enjoyed seeing her. Um, another thing I liked about the film was the fact that this film is a conversation starter about the red flags in relationships and the things that couples don't talk about when they're dating and courting. Because as you're watching this film, you'll be thinking, didn't you guys talk about this when you were dating before you got married? Why is this coming up now? And it's very relatable because lots of people go to the altar these days without do doing due diligence and asking the right questions when dating and courting. What I didn't like, hmm. I didn't like that this film had a very home video vibe to it. This film feels like the kind of movie that you catch your mother watching on Africa Magic. It was, it's not new Nollywood. It was a bit on the annoying side. And if that's not your cup of tea, if home videos are not your cup of tea, then I don't think you'll enjoy this film one bit. Another thing I didn't like was the manipulation in this film. They use Christian faith and the Bible and whatnot to try and get the couple in the movie to stay together. And their situation, mind you, is a very toxic marriage because the husband is so emotionally abusive. And, you know, ideally you think that this marriage needs to end, the parties need to go their separate ways. But characters in the movie use Christian faith and the Bible very much like in real life to try and get the couple to stay together. And I was concerned about all that because Apparently, this film is based on like loosely based on real life events, according to the poster and the trailer. So I wonder, you know, how that played out in real life. The third thing I didn't like about this film is that that the film was OK and I was enduring it or managing it for like the first half. If they ended this movie at like the one hour mark of this film and I've said, OK, not bad. I learned a thing or two. It was cool and it would have pissed out and it would have been good. But I think they realized that they had like a long way to go. They had only gone like one hour into the film and maybe they're, they're trying to achieve almost two hours. So for like the remaining 40 minutes of this film, this movie just goes in a whole a weird direction and it just becomes funny and it, be it feels very unnecessary with the things that happen, particularly the fourth thing that I, or third or fourth thing that I didn't like about this film was when they introduced black magic and jazz into the story. And at that point, I was like, they've lost the plot of this film. And I had mentally checked out of the movie at that point in time. Who should see it? See Vanity if you like Nollywood home videos. You know, those kind of films that African mothers 50 and above tend to like watching. And I think if you like that, then I think you like this movie. If you like movies on uh, toxic relationships and toxic marriages, you'll probably enjoy this. Finally, if you like those films where they try and use like Christian values or talk about how Christian values are important for like a successful marriage, then you'll probably enjoy this film as well. So in conclusion, this movie was actually quite thought provoking in the sense that it introduced me to the concept of an Ephesians 5 husband, which is kind of like the mirror of a Proverbs 31 wife in the sense that Ephesians 5, 25 to the end, which I'll read at the end of this video, by the way, it lists out the qualities or the values of a good Christian husband. And um, this movie actually really does hammer on that scripture quite a bit. So that was a bit of an education for me. And I will meditate more on that going forward. You know, on this channel, I also talk about relationships. So that was good. But aside from that, I don't think I was the target demographic for this movie. I think the target demo for this film is people who really like home video Nollywood and like I said earlier, middle-aged African mothers who like this type of, you know, Nollywood films, right? Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed this movie review, guys, please like it by clicking on the like button. You know where it is. Please do that for me. 
and subscribe to my channel as well by clicking on the red subscribe button. On this channel, I don't just do Nollywood movie reviews, I also talk about relationships. You can check out some of my old relationship videos and my old Nollywood reviews by clicking the card in the corner of the screen. Now, I don't just have this um, YouTube channel, I also have another YouTube channel where I talk about personal finance, saving and investing because those things are very important. To check that channel out, you can click the link in the description box down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you go and see Vanity in the cinema, right, come back, or if you've seen it already, let me know in the comment section down below at what point you feel you would have left that marriage if you were in Ify's shoes. Because that's something I kept on thinking about as I was watching this film. At this point, at this point, at this point, I would have left this marriage and left this guy long ago because the situation was just super toxic. That said, guys, let's read the Bible for those of you who don't want to stick around. <laughs> okay, so Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25, the message translation says, Husbands, go all out in your love for your wives, exactly as Christ did for the church. A love marked by giving, not getting. Christ's love makes the church whole. His words evoke her beauty. Everything he does and says is designed to bring the best out of her, dressing her in dazzling white, silk radiant with holiness. And that is how husbands ought to love their wives. They are really doing themselves a favor since they're already one in marriage. Verse 29, no one abuses his own body, does he? No, he feeds and pampers it. That's how Christ treats us, the church since we are part of his body. And this is why a man leaves father and mother and cherishes his wife. No longer two, they become one flesh. This is a huge mystery and I don't pretend to understand it all. What is clearest to me is the way Christ treats the church. And this provides a good picture of how each husband is to treat his wife, loving himself in loving her and how each wife is to honor her husband. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.